Mavis Tsai, the founder of Awareness, Courage, and Love Global Project. We have chapters in six continents, and I had the privilege of speaking with a leader from each continent about how they've managed to stay connected with themselves and others and to find meaning in the darkness of a pandemic. Thank you so much for agreeing to talk with me about this topic of reconnecting with meaning in a time of darkness. You know, it's been so hard on everyone worldwide, this pandemic that's now starting its third year. And I'd like to know what's been your biggest struggle and or loss during this time? I think there are two for me that are the biggest. One is this, this loss of trust and, um, and, and deep respect that I've seen in the world. And I really feel saddened by the polarization that I'm seeing. And I really feel a loss of that. I mean, I, I'm talking very big, but I see it in every little interaction on Twitter or on social, you know, on Facebook or even on LinkedIn and, and even in the media and, and the, the disrespect that people have for a different way of being in people's response to the pandemic is just heightened, it seems. And it seems, you know, there's, I think there was always separation, but somehow I'm feeling the separation even more deeply. I didn't lose someone very close due to COVID, but it was difficult to see, to, yeah, to have more distance between people, seeing that there is polarization in the society. So that's more in the last, the longer it lasts, the more it's obvious that it's polarizing the society and it's difficult to, to talk with each other. There's so much insecurity or, yeah, it's mostly fear which drives people. Can you tell me what your biggest struggle or loss has been? during the pandemic? I think one of the biggest loss I, I had on the pandemic is where it was kind of losing an embodied presence from me and from others, not being able to really connect with other people from a more sense, felt sense experience. And that kind of, collapse my experience of love and connection with other human beings so I felt lonely and uh, isolated more than lonely isolated more than lonely collapsing your experience of love wow I want to know what's been your biggest struggle and or loss during this pandemic. It's been going on for such a long time and it wasn't a, as big of a deal in Australia at first. And, and lately it's gotten really, really intense. So tell me what your experience has been like. Yeah, um, I, I think it, it's been a roller coaster of, you know, feelings of powerlessness and vulnerability. And there's so many losses, you know, that question, I, I think, there's so many losses over the last two years. Um, the start of the pandemic, just, just before it began in Australia, I left my job, a 30 year career, to spend time with my elderly parents. And the week of my farewell, uh, my father had a stroke oh. and died three days later. Oh. And it was such a shock. And then the pandemic hit. <laughs> And so my mum, who is in aged care with Parkinson's dementia, uh, I was then unable to visit her because we were in lockdown. I live in Victoria, so whilst it's heating up in Australia now, Victoria, we were in lockdown for nearly nine months on and off. And so that was nine months I wasn't seeing my mum face to face and having video calls and- At a time she really needed you too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was, that was huge. That was really painful. 
um, not seeing my grandchildren. <laughs> uh, it's interesting that the pandemic really accentuated the relationships that were important to me in my life. Yeah, and I was struck, Ben, by what you were saying earlier about, it just, it just made me think about your heart being broken open and how losing him somehow opened your ability to love even more deeply. That's a beautiful way to capture it, yeah. I remember there's, uh, after the last call that I had talked with him, um, I remember walking in my mom's office because I wanted to talk with her and she was on a phone call and she had no idea what happened. She didn't know I was crying. She was just kind of on the call. And so I just didn't want to bother. And so I sat kind of in the couch in our office and I just, I remember my dog was next to me. And, um, you know, one thing that Cliff really talked about was just kind of how important like right now is like this present moment, you know, I have a quote from him. He says, uh, he says, live your life feel everything, experience everything fully, be in the now because the moments are all you have. You know, you would always talk about like mindful living, you know, bringing your attention to, to this present moment and really savoring the now while you had it. And I remember I was just like, just with my dog and I don't know, I just, that was like a really beautiful experience where I just, just got to really kind of savor being with this, you know, with my dog and, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. This moment, Ben, I'm really savoring being with you and having this conversation with you. Augustine. Yeah. I really appreciate you talking to me about these questions related to uh, your struggles and losses during the pandemic, which have been monumental and just your process of going through them and facing them and the healing process that you've been going through and are still going through. The thing that I have realized is I'm uh, talking about my mother, talking about Grace, is that both of them had a vision for me. And that vision must, I must live out. And uh, you see, my when I was leaving, just as a 15-year-old, I was leaving home and I was going to a place which is 2,000 kilometers away. So my neighbors asked her, it's a child, why are you sending him away? What will happen to him? So my mother said something very remarkable. He said he has a tongue. And he, that tongue will protect him. So she had already decided I'm going to be a good communicator. She had already decided that is my talent. That is but, what seemed. Okay, what is your what is your talent? My talent. She said he has a tongue. He can talk. A tongue. You can talk. <laughs> yes. So that will protect him. That's my mother's. Uh, that was my mother's sense of me. That if you know, I he may not do uh, other very physical things, but he has. You know how to easy. talk. Yes. He talks. Yeah. So that that will save protect him. That will save him. And I have always remembered this. It is my communication skills or my communication abilities that sees me through. You're saying something really important, and I want to understand it better. You're cooking something having to do with embodied experience. Yes. While we are struggling in this pandemic, it's opening up a bit, and we're able to be in person together with masks on. So what are you cooking up in terms of embodied experience? Even if we can't be in physical presence, help people be more attuned to their own bodies and kind of training people to communicate in a more subtle but profound ways in a more embodied channel. So like we are here talking, but I can see your gestures. I can see the tone of your skin in a way, the color, but the kind of tension and that it's helping me feeling you and be more attuned to you. And that I think it's something we can experience and learn. 
that's something I'm hoping. You sort of answered this a bit, but what what have you learned about the depths of who you are during this pandemic time? I think you, you said you learned that relationships are, are core, but say, say more about what you've learned about yourself. Yeah, I, I think my greatest lesson is my capacity to be tender towards myself, mm -hmm. my own vulnerability. You know, um, I think historically I've been a very optimistic, strong person and I don't think I realised my capacity to really stay with my own pain. I've found it easy to be present to the pain of others. But I really got an opportunity to be present to myself. That sounds, and, really, that yeah. sounds incredible. Yeah. yeah. I learned a lot from that. I loved what you said about you are tending to your heart and soul and spirit more. What, what are the practices that you've been engaging in that have given you more strength or lightness during these really hard times? You know, the most important practice is a sitting practice, sitting in stillness, a Zen practice, which helps a lot. And there are online possibilities to connect with, with uh, I'm connecting with a Zen center in Santa Fe in John Halifax. The inspiration of, of listening to people who inspire me, like John Halifax or you at the ACL meetups. No, I've appreciated uh, seeing you at our meetings, at our ACL meetings. And you alluded to this, but I, I'd like you to speak more directly to this idea of actually finding or creating moments of happiness during the pandemic. <clears throat> yeah, the mostly moments of happiness have been with my beloved partner, Sabine, and I'm really lucky that I got to know her uh, just before the pandemic. And yeah, moments of soft and tender touch or tenderness and moments of being together and yeah, connection. It's about connection, connection with my daughter who lost her mother uh, in December and not, not due to COVID, but it was a sudden death. And I've been there to support her and I had very sweet moments of connection with her, which made me happy in, in the midst of this um, difficult time. Sounds really beautiful. Can you say a bit more about saying goodbye energetically or spiritually? Yeah. Um, so I think I come from, or at least I still have this belief that uh, each of us are energy and that we're infinite, beautiful light. And that's a form and that the body we take is another form. So I think just remembering that and being able to, you know, when I close my eyes and I put my hand on my heart and I think about the souls in our family that have gone, I can feel them and I can really feel their heart. And I think it was that, it was that being able to connect in that way um, and to be able to remember and really sense that uh, spirit. And you know, knowing that whatever I said to that energy, to that soul, that person in that moment was as real as if I was there in person. Um, so I think just, and even just now, even after the rites were over, even just knowing that 
and yeah, there's a particular transition that's happened. There's a particular form that's ended, but you know, there's also an infinite aliveness that's always going to be there. So I think that's you know that's and you know we kind of sat around as a family and talked about the person and we talked about how they'd impacted us and talked about what they meant to us um, and we didn't need to have an audience for that to happen and normally we do this as a eulogy or we do it on a zoom but it was just you know allowing us to feel that person's presence to feel their presence in our lives and to feel their their and that's a way they'll always be alive um, so i think that those were the kind of um, things that we did as a family and even now as i'm talking about it, it gives me great joy i don't know um, just tapping into that sacred, that infinite, that idea that, you know, we are all beings that have journeys and we continue on and death is not really death as we know it. There's a, there's a certain happiness and stability that comes from that, even as I'm talking about it. So, Ben, mm -hmm. what, what have you learned about the depths of who you are? as a result of this loss of your mentor, Cliff? I think I found a lot of strengths in myself. I, um, you know, I expected it to just tear me apart. I remember that after this last call with him, you know, I'd cried and I cried into that night and, you know, Cliff had taught me about feeling your feelings and not running away from them and making sure you really show up to them. And so I was determined that whatever darkness would show up, I would lean into it. That it was welcome. It was a friend, right? And I had gone to sleep that night and I woke up the next day and I had expected everything to just be dark and gloomy and sad. And I expected it to be hell. And I don't know why. It was the most, one of the most surreal days of my life. I woke up and the sun was extra warm that morning. The sky was extra bright. And I came downstairs and I could like look at my family and they were just in their own worlds and it was just like a mundane day but it was like art I don't know how to describe it it was just so special I remember I made a cabinet with my mom I like made a cabinet we were just like working on constructing this cabinet from some department store and um I would never expect that to be like a sacred experience or a spiritual experience but that was just one thing where I think um everything that was so important about what he had taught me. I just found it, I really connected with. Um, and uh, so I carried that. And through that whole grieving process, I feel like um, I've connected so much more strongly with what I find important, the life that I wanna live and um, uh, kind of the love in my heart that kind of drives all of that. If you felt touched or inspired by the heartfelt sentiments that were expressed in these conversations, my hope is that you will join the Awareness, Courage, and Love Global Project and become a fellow traveler as a participant or trained to become a chapter leader. We believe that every individual has a complex life story full of both anguish and joy. And although our lives are unique in their specifics, we share many life experiences that bind us with the unseen ties of family in its broadest sense. In our organization, we're honored to share journeys of exploration, connection, and growth with whomever crosses our path, whether it's for an afternoon, a few months, or years, or for a lifetime. We collaborate with partners from all cultures and walks of life who learn languages of love that are committed to inclusivity for all.